hi, my name's Don White, and I'm an executive vice president at Colliers International here in Winnipeg, uh, leading the local investment group, as well as the CEO and co-founding partner of a local private equity firm called Private Pension Partners. I've been asked today to go through a series of questions respecting the commercial and apartment market here in Winnipeg. And to that end, one of the questions was, how has the retail versus office versus industrial versus apartment sectors performed uh, given our current current COVID situation? Unfortunately, the answer is that it is unbalanced and not equal. Uh, some sectors have performed very, very well, while others obviously have suffered. The industrial market specifically, the apartment market specifically, with a lot of the money that is flowing from government sources uh, in the form of relief, uh, there have been very high collections in, the, in, in the, the industrial and the apartment sector, and we have seen continued new development. Obviously, with the stay home orders of uh, many workers, our downtown is obviously in a situation like across Canada. We are not in great shape downtown. There is mounting vacancy pressures, and clearly moving into this year, there will obviously be some opportunistic leasing opportunities in those sectors. The retail is really bifurcated as to whether it's open air or enclosed. Obviously, the luxury fashion malls, enclosed properties across Canada have really suffered over the last nine months, as opposed to some of the open air uh, properties that are either Walmart or Home Depot anchored. A lot of those uses have done very, very well. We're also seeing in the retail sector a number of uh, continued leasing uh, initiatives. We're also seeing that a lot of the fast service restaurants, smaller footprint service entities, uh, takeout, cannabis, there's really been a, a really strong growth in a lot of those businesses. And something a lot of Winnipeggers might not have noticed, but we've also seen a lot of redevelopment of grocery uh, stores. So around town, there's a lot of Safeways or Sobeys being uh, converted into Freshco's. And so investment certainly in retail continues. Uh, another question that I think is very topical to people is what is happening with Portage Place and the Bay downtown and what are their impacts on downtown? Uh, clearly, the Bay is a historic uh, asset. It is a beautiful property, but it is very, very, very large. And so the redevelopment costs, many have heard that that asset actually has a dollar value ascribed to it. Uh, one day somebody will figure out, likely with some form of government support, how to transition that asset. And there is already committees. Uh, the city of Winnipeg itself is forming a, a panel or a committee to help work through those questions. And certainly that that is something uh, that the city should work hard at with the province and even with the federal government, hopefully to transition given its historical significance to Winnipeg. I hope that's possible. It wasn't possible with the Eaton's building, so 21 uh, 2022 time will tell. As we tape this session, there has been no final decision. Uh, there has been a lot of TIF tax increment financing money thrown in that project, whether that's right or wrong. Uh, I'll, you know, I'll stay silent on that. Uh, but there is a lot of private development already ongoing in downtown Winnipeg. From 300 Main, Artis's new residential tower, to the redevelopment of Edis by Edison properties of uh, a former Manitoba housing project on Smith Street, to Timber Creek's redevelopment of the Medical Arts Building, to True North's recent uh, addition of 225 Carleton. There is a lot of private sector development that is occurring and planning to occur in downtown. So I really believe that downtown will come back and it will come down, uh, come back quite quickly. Uh, often people are asking is, will this pandemic destroy the way people work and how downtowns live and thrive? It is my view that that is uh, absolutely not going to happen. Downtown is a place of uh, congregating. It is a place of business. It is a place of idea exchange. It's a place of efficiency. And so with the amount of money and capital that is being invested in our downtown, I believe in five years, it is going to be very, very different in, in, in a positive way than it is today. So the focus of people working, uh, as much as I believe some people may enjoy working from home, uh, in my personal opinion, there's no way you have the efficiency or the quality of work. And the quick example is, is if you're online shopping and you're getting people to pick things for you, whether it's a wholesale store or food, etc., cetera, uh, think about how expensive that is to run on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, people need to be able to shop on their own. Um, and I think that the pandemic, once the vaccine is rolled out and once people feel safe and comfortable uh, getting back to work downtown, 
downtown will start to flourish once again. I think there will be a near-term turn and people will very quickly start heading back to work downtown. A lot of people uh, are very confident with it and I believe they should be. Uh, in terms of why, why does Winnipeg uh, uh, seem to be uh, so resilient to this pandemic as compared to many places? There, there is going to be pain. Uh, it's not shared equally for sure. The recovery is a K-shape. There are many industries that are hurting from it. And that at times, uh, to me, at least seems unfair in terms of some of the policy governments have, have implemented. But the reality is Winnipeg does well because of our isolation and our diversity. Uh, there's a recent report from RBC that suggests that uh, Winnipeg and Manitoba is gonna be one of only two provinces to fully recover from the pandemic in 2021. Uh, that, that's fascinating news. And our isolation, uh, again, combined with our, our diversity means that we've had to survive on our own. We have been able to survive this pandemic better than most because of that diversification. And remember, it's our isolation. The nearest city with more than a million people to us is Minneapolis. And so we've had to fight above our weight for a long time. And I think that that's really proving itself. When things start to take off, you will see Manitoba's projected GDP. It will fall below that of other provinces. And that uh, that is fine because steady as she goes has benefited our real estate commercial and multifamily market for quite some time. In terms of why there's ongoing development, you see in the industrial side, Quad Real as an example is very active in, in uh, the uh, north part of the city out, out in the center port area. Uh, there's lots of multifamily ongoing across town, uh, across the city. We really continue to be in an under-demolished state as opposed to an overbuilt state. And while there's no question CMHC, uh, their antenna is up a bit on our market in terms of the amount of new multifamily supply on its way, it, it's really the pace of adding that to the market which is important to watch. Similarly, the industrial market, I think that you will see in uh, all sectors uh, a move to sell and dispose uh, of some of the older properties uh, in 2021 as some of these players are migrating into the new development world. And those properties still absolutely have a place in the market. They're gonna re likely need reinvestment, repositioning, and just you know re-energization depending on who the new buyers are. But it's very healthy to see large players in this market. A lot of the private uh, local capital that's here and some of that pension fund money, as it migrates up into the new development world, that's certainly a sign of a healthy market. So things still very much remain in balance from fu a fundamental perspective, other than maybe office. The retail vacancy rate, five to 6%, again, healthy. Uh, it's not it's, it's not stellar, but it's certainly healthy. The industrial vacancy rate is under 4%, which is why you're seeing new development. The apartment vacancy rate remains under 4%, which is why you're seeing new development. But there is no question that if you're an owner of older product or if you're an owner of a, a more mature portfolio, you are certainly gonna have to get active and make sure that you have a proactive asset management and leasing program, uh, proactive property management, because there is certainly competition coming and that will define the winners and losers in the next sort of one to three years as we move forward. I think one other very important facet of downtown to think about is also the forks and some of the infill sites that are currently proposed to be developed or are under development in the near term. One specifically is the St. Regis site. That property was recently bought by a local investment group called Rockport. Uh, they have pretty significant plans, that being the old fortress development site. So very nice to see that property having a vision for moving forward. And also not to forget the Forks. If you haven't been to the Forks in the last few years, I'd really encourage you to get there. Uh, the transformation has been truly incredible. The job uh, by that entity really has transformed that into a destination. And people need to understand that there is a massive residential, multi-residential platform that is being developed right in behind the Via Real Station on some of the old unused parking lot lands, which will even transform that area further. The suburbs aren't to be outdone either. 
a huge influencer in the Winnipeg real estate market in the next decade will be the redevelopment of the Campion Barracks. All of those properties have now been demolished. The ownership is moving towards the zoning and the planning. And at over 100 acres, that will certainly impact the southwest quadrant of the city. So there is some very good land that is coming into play. And I am very excited to watch the growth of our city in the next five years. I think we're going to wake up and it's going to be very, very different in a very good way.